This video is to tell you how I chamber flute barrels for my HK and set me builds using a 3-axis CNC mill. I'm not going to get into the whole chamber flute uh, details. I figure if you're here looking, you already know what they are. You just want to know how to do it. So here's a Sarasafe slug taken from a NATO G3 barrel. You can see the chamber flutes. There's 12 of them. Each, each flute is uh, 33 thousandths wide and 16 thousandths deep. And this particular one has a uh, 13 thousandths radius across the top. So it's basically a triangle with a dull end on it. Now when you do a Sarasafe cast on these, you wipe out these back flutes because they're deeper. And as you pound it out of the barrel, they get sheared off. So I'll uh, go over the equipment you're going to need if you're going to do it to do it this way. Okay, so I stuck a piece of plastic behind the cutter so you could I could get the camera to focus. This is just a barrel I'm chamber fluting for the video, and uh, it's a uh, it's been taken off of another rifle. I knurled the end of it and uh, returned it to to be pressed into a, another build. First thing you're going to need is a uh, this is. I guess you would call this shape, uh, like using a shaper, only you're pulling the contour, you're pulling a cutter through the contour, uh, moving an X and Z as, you're, as you go along. So this, or this tool is, uh, holds a tiny little cutter that uh, protrudes from the bottom of this tool about 70 thousandths of an inch. And it's ground to a, I don't know, 58, 57 degree angle. You can use 45, it really doesn't matter. And then it's got a, uh, a hook on the end of it. I don't know if I can zoom fast far enough to see it. And it's a real, it's a uh, positive angle, so that it comes in and it drags the uh, the chips out. Now, it's not enough to to have to hold the tool straight. It's it's got to be aligned with your x-axis, but you have to keep it there. So, I came up with a system using some scrap parts that uses a, a collar on the rotating portion of the spindle has a tab on it that comes off and it is held in between two screws by another collar attached to the machine which is does not move and then I have adjustment screws on each side of the tab so that I can use that to align the tool to the x-axis and keep it in position and this of course is after I've got the the barrel center line picked up next thing to do and I'll show you the, the, the program and the CAD layout to uh, help better explain it, but I set my zeros at uh, the zero is actually down inside the barrel, so I'm coming up and I'm I'm touching the cutter off of the top and I'm and I'm checking the the face of the cutter, the cutter against the face of the barrel with a gauge block, and I'm setting that to a specific distance that'll also be in the video. So other than holding your spindle rigid and uh, align with the axis, that's all I'm going to cover at this point. Oh, I should mention that. You need 12 flutes, so I used a, a 24 position indexer and I just grab every other slot. I've got a layout here that shows the outside of the barrel drawn to scale. The cartridge of course is in the orange. And the black in the center here uh, is the, the cutter. And the, the tip of the tool and you can see right here that is uh, ten thousandths of an inch of clearance for the tool and the cutter to get into the bore. Anyway, the chamber flute needs to start in front of the cartridge mouth. I start mine seventy thousandths. You could go further if you want. And it drops down sixteen thousandths to the cartridge mouth. Goes back to the bottom of the neck, down to the shoulder, and then I want the flutes to end 80% of, of the overall cartridge length and I want the flutes to be 16 thousandths deep based on this, where this red line is. So I write a program in incremental. I, I use absolute measurements to get into the position. Then I go to incremental and I go X70 minus 16 and I go to the neck down to the shoulder and then I actually raise it up. The cutter actually will raise up uh, 16 thousandths at the 80 percent mark. So then I run it in cycles, a thousandth at a pass, until I get down to the red line and at the bottom of the red line, the base of the red line, it, it goes to flush with the cartridge side at the 80 percent mark. So I've got a taper 
from the 80% mark to the shoulder and then I'm constant all the way up to the neck. One of the tricky things is to get your tool sized, your tool holder. If you'll notice there's steps in the tool holder to clear all the way through because as you move your holder and you go down to these different positions especially when you get down to the base of the neck now you're tight at this front part of the tool holder because I've got a set screw. I'm sure somebody can come up with a better way to do this. It was the only way I could figure at the time and uh, I'm kind of hoping that this will create some discussion and people trying different things to flute chambers. Uh, I would personally like to try ECM method. It would be nice to make a 3D printed slug with exposed wires at uh, 12, uh, 12 different positions around the cartridge and use a uh, uh, salt water flush and some low voltage to see if we could burn the, the flutes into the chamber. But in the meantime, this is what I've got to, what I've got to work with on the uh, three axis CNC mill. I should add that I use the, the barrel itself, the diameter, and the barrel face to set my our X and Z locations actually. <clears throat> I make the uh, this point on the cutter zero zero so that puts me at, at a Z of plus point five eight eight at the top and an X of uh, 1.956 on the face of the barrel. And then, like I said, from that absolute position, then I do incremental moves in a uh, macro uh, and drop it a thousandth per pass. It's inevitable that the little carbide cutter is going to break down. I'll make uh, this, run this program on all 12 flutes. I'll scrape it out later with a new cutter. done barrels in 30 caliber because the cutter the size of the cutter and if you look at the end it's it gets really thin and using uh, high-speed steel there's uh, a little bit of flex involved even though you're only scraping a thousandth of an inch at a time I'd like to know how the, the pros have been doing it I know HK uses a uh, electro uh, chemical process ECM but uh, I, and I've always wanted to try it, just really wasn't ever planning to have to flute chambers again. I've chamber fluted barrels in 7.62x51, 7.62x39, and 7.62x25. I've never built anything with the 25. I was planning on building a, uh, an MP5 ish um, sub gun started on it kind of lost interest in the whole sub gun uh, thing so the barrel's just been sitting around for I guess around eight years Okay, I wish it looked as good as on the camera as it does on my screen. We'll take a look at the chamber we just fluted. I've got a cartridge stuck in. You can see the gap between the cartridge neck and the reamer neck for the gas to uh, flow through the flutes. The uh, gas is going to go between the bullet and the free bore down the flutes to float the cartridge out. I guess float's a funny term, but that's the one everybody uses. Free bore to the lands. I 
I'll take those burrs out on the lathe before I mount the barrel. I'm comparing a couple more barrel chamber flutes. This is a Rim Country Manufacturing SR9 T barrel. And uh, the cartridge is fully inserted. You see the shorter neck and plenty of gas flow to the flutes. Um, note the distance this cone to the lands. Huge jump in the bullet. So next I will show you a G3, a used G3 barrel. Okay, this is a used G3 barrel, Hepler and Coke. You can see they use a curved transition on the neck on the reamer. There's a uh, there again, more space for the gases to flow through. This is a NATO barrel, and you can see that it's got the nice short distance to the lands that makes it easy to set your bullet for the jump. All right, if you hung around this far in the video to see the end result, I've got a Sarah Safe slug here. This is from the uh, fluted McGowan barrel. I did have to go deeper than I thought. Uh, I had to push the cutter down to 23 thousandths to get the uh, form I wanted. And then for comparison, this is the, the G3. The G3 on the bottom. Alright, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Okay, I had to set this barrel back up twice, so I had to Try to pick it up, uh, pick up the flutes with the setup, and that's pretty tricky. But uh, I did have to drive the flutes a little deeper than I thought. The 16 didn't give me the contour I wanted. So there's your free bore um, cartridge neck to the reamer neck, free bore the land.